Hey, it's Jeff Zito, and this is the Celebrity Jobber Podcast. You can find all our past episodes on CelebrityJobber.com. My guest this week is the closer of the Philadelphia Phillies. Yeah, just coming back from a little bout with the flu. Might not be ready to go right at the beginning of the season, but he's not too far behind. I've been watching this guy pitch since he was 10 years old. That's right, he actually played Little League and high school baseball with my son. That's right, this guy is only 22 years old. Uh, Look, what if baseball wasn't in the cards? What did he major in? What does he think he might be doing as a career if it wasn't for baseball? What was his big break? Was he destined to be a big league pitcher? I mean, he didn't always have that nasty slider and that 100 mile an hour fastball. And like everybody out there, what was his first job? We're going to find out. The closer of the Philadelphia Phillies, Orion Kirkering, is my guest this week on Celebrity Jobber. The Celebrity Jobber podcast with Jeff Zito. If you like what you hear, please subscribe. What if these celebrities weren't famous? What would they have become? What was their first job? We're about to find out. Hey, Orion. Hey, how's it going? So tell me a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? Um, so I was born out in, like, San Diego area, like, uh, Camp Talenton, the Marine Corps base, out kind of by, like, Huntington Beach. And uh, my dad was a Marine for 20-plus years, so I was on the back end of his Marine career. So he was finishing up his stuff that way. So I was out there until I was about, like, four years old, five years old. And then he came back to his hometown, which is in Sarasota. That's where he grew up most of his life because he was born in Missouri. And then my grandparents, his mom and dad, moved down to Sarasota. I say I was pretty much born and raised out here in Venice, Sarasota area. So I've always been here since I was five. Tell me, your dad, um, a military man, and then when you guys moved to Sarasota, did your dad stay in military? What what type of job did your dad have even up to today? He took a little break after, you know, 20 plus years. I think he took like a year or two off, maybe. And then he started working with the Sarasota County Emergency Planning. So it's kind of like... He was kind of like one of the helpers of his boss. So like his boss was like the one who ran the county kind of, of like, if there was a hurricane, that'd be kind of like he was the guy to go to. So he was kind of helping him a bit. I think five, seven years ago now, the city of Sarasota hired a full-time emergency manager. So he was able to take over that job. So he's been working there ever since, like I said, five, seven years. So he's kind of using his military background of like, if something bad happens, I can like readjust everything on the fly. He's done so much with all that. So it's, almost second nature for him and sure as hard as well in the military so and i know your dad was involved in little league and at one point was the uh president of the little league in venice that uh you and my son and a bunch of your friends grew up playing correct for sure yeah he was like he was minimal at first like when i was younger just kind of make sure it was like I wouldn't say looking out for me, but, like, he just cared a lot about it until, obviously, like, went to high school. I think that's when he started, like, pushing that away a little bit and said, all right, I think I did my time. So I think it's, like, someone else's turn to take, like, that next chapter of, like, trying to make sure that literally stays how it is. And, Orion, your dad kind of became a little famous. Your major league debut back in September, um, you struck out the batter close up of your father in the stands, he's emotional, and uh, you know, obviously, I could only imagine the feeling uh, that was going through uh, your father's mind uh, at the time. I, I can only imagine. I would have probably been way worse. But video of you striking out a couple of batters and then going to your dad in the stands that blew up and uh, millions and millions of views. It was just kind of a whirlwind moment kind of because it was like after the game it was like i got a couple questions from some of the interviewers and it was like i haven't seen the video yet because we're doing all the post game stuff and then once i got done i didn't even see the, i didn't even look at my phone yet of like all like the congrats and what to go for your first outing and all was like i hear from the first reporter is did you see about or see and hear about your dad and i was like no what happened and i was like oh he was crying on national tv and everyone was loving it. i was like <laughs> i think that kind of I felt my heart do it that way just because it was kind of too what I told him earlier in the week. Like he was like emotional about it too. And it was just like a really cool moment to remember forever. Let's talk about a few moments 
two phone calls that I, I, I want to talk to you about. The first phone call, tell me about back in 2022, which is not very long ago. It's June or July and it's draft day. And, you know, you're playing for the University of South Florida and you might have been talking that season to some major league teams. Tell me about the phone call that you got on draft day and, and kind of how that went. When I got that phone call between my agent and then the Phillies calling me, it was kind of like a surreal moment because I like we're super excited. Obviously, we're able. I'm so happy that you're able to get your foot in the door. Of obviously, minor league professional baseball and see where your career can go. And they were like, "All right." And the local scout, um, he was an ECU guy, so he kind of knew like USF a little bit and kind of like between his playing career a little bit. So me and him were talking a little bit, and it was like, "All right." You're going to leave in, like, two days to head up to Philly to do some uh, medical work, like MRIs and, like, x-rays and stuff like that. And it was, I think that was, like, kind of the real moment where I was like, oh, shoot, this is an actual big boy job now where it's like, all right, we're going to put a lot of money investing in you, and all right, you're going to be, like, our little toy that we want to obviously see get better, but it's also you got to put that money and time into that investment. So. I think that was the first kind of like, oh, this is like actual real deal stuff now. So when you got that phone call, Orion, and, you know, it's like what every, you know, kid dreams about getting that that phone call. Did you feel like relieved a little bit, the pressure off of you a little bit, everything that you've worked for? has kind of like paid off and here it is or was it the opposite where you like oh man uh here it is like you just said big boy job uh putting a lot of money into me um i'm nervous i better perform um honestly it was the very first one because like i was super nervous kind of like how i said earlier my numbers weren't the best and then just kind of like i think the moment that was like the most relief for me was like obviously um, draft day comes, or like, there's a lot of like emotions where like a team says they might want to pick you here, but then like you kind of fall back more because like their other guy ahead of you is available, so they took him. Seeing your name go across the board, I think that was like where that relief moment came. I was like, did it? All right, I got officially did it. I made my goal ever since like a kid being drafted for a team, and that, I think that was the most relief for it. You were known as a little bit of a late bloomer. Um, I can tell you firsthand, I've watched you pitch since you were about uh, 10, 10 years old. And yeah. you were very good. Uh, and there was a lot of kids that were very good in, in your area of Venice, Florida. They knew how to play baseball and they were you know, on travel teams and so on and so forth. You were one of those kids. But I remember, you know, you pitched on the JV team your, your sophomore year. And then, boom, something happened relatively over the summer when my son told me as a senior and you're one year behind him he said dad you are never going to guess who the ace of our staff is and i said who who is it he says it's orion kirkering and i said really well you know what happened i mean I, to say you're the ace now from you know playing jv just last year what happened he says his fastball's in the low 90s and he's got a slider that nobody can touch. So do you remember this time of your life, Orion? And what did happen that summer to where you got so much better so quickly? Oh, yeah, for sure. Kind of like that sophomore year, the junior year. I think that was probably the best like learning year I've had of just growing in baseball just because of the fact that I was able to learn a little bit more I went to a pitching coach ever since like my freshman year, trying to get a little bigger, stronger, better, and like be able to like clean up my mechanics, clean up my lower half, kind of stuff like that, and then just be able to progress that way and just keep learning and keep feeling filling my knowledge and power of baseball. And then that summer, do you remember the point in time where it just like kind of all came together? It all clicked. For sure, just gradually a little bit. I think it was like times where it was like. I think when I was like 15, 16, I was like 84, 86. And by the end of the summer, I was like 88, 91. And then be able to like, I think that year there was the tournament down in uh, Jupiter or whatever. And so it was like uh, Guthrie and Faulkner asked me to go pitch up for like the bigger group, like an inning or two. And so it was kind of like at that moment where I was just like, okay, like I am obviously like be able to like be where I'm at, just keep being better each time. 
Okay, so more or less you felt like you could hang with the older guys when you said Mark Guthrie and Craig Faulkner, they were the coaches of your travel team, the Florida Burn. They wanted you to go pitch with the older kids in a big tournament in Jupiter, and you did well, and you were like, you know, I belong here. My dad always kept telling me, like, so he was like slow as fast when he had to like take his pistol off his holster or like bring his rifle up. It was like slow as fast. So if you know the movements, your body's just gonna know it easily. So if you just keep going step by step without like rushing it, you'll get to where you want. So just keeping it that way, I think that's how I always felt about it, where it was like, this is cool, but just keep progressing at each step. Like don't stop learning. All right, let's jump to this past September. You are in A ball in Clearwater, Florida. From there, you go to A-Ball, New Jersey, Double A, Triple A, all in the same year, which is kind of not how it goes usually. I mean, I can remember, you know, maybe guys like uh, Chris Sale. He came through pretty quick like that, but doesn't usually happen to too many guys. Takes a long time. So it's September. You're in Triple A. You're doing well. And what happened? You get the phone call. Is it anything like Bull Durham? where they're like, hey, kid, you're going to the show. Tell me about that phone call when they called you up to the big leagues, told you you're going to be a Philadelphia Philly. Um, I went to AAA after like our AA season ended. I think it was in Binghamton, New York. So my girlfriend's with me at the time. We got to pack up the apartment, and then we're going up to Lehigh, which was only like 45 minutes, an hour away. So we're like, okay, this will be good for like an extra week, kind of hanging out here, seeing what's new over here. I pitched earlier in the week because I'm, I'm thinking like, oh, I'm just going to get my feet wet for next year because I figured I might be here next year because that was my goal for next year, obviously, if this year didn't happen like how it did. To be in so AAA. Like, to be on the, yeah, be in AAA or at least kind of maybe get my door on the 40-man roster at some point between later that year or like at least kind of like knock my foot on the door where it's like, and so we were going out, me and her were running errands around the place. Like we just get out of the parking garage and the manager calls me. And I was like, there's no way this is happening right now. And so he calls me and it's like, goes on like his little manager, the player speech kind of, and we've just been seeing a lot of guys. And it's like, I usually don't do this over the phone. I usually do this in person, but you're going up to the big leagues today and they need you up there for tonight's game. Wow. Kind of like a whirlwind experience where it was like, I was going out maybe two hours before. We had the report at the ballpark that day. And so, like, we're rushing around, grabbing everything. I run to the ballpark. My bags are all packed. And I'm like, good luck. Obviously, like, shaking all the hands, saying thank you. Packing up the apartment again for, like, the fifth time this year, so which was pretty funny. <laughs> and just going down to the ballpark was pretty cool and just kind of experienced that way because it was, like, Going from Lehigh, going to the air or the uh, hotel they gave us for the week, kind of. So dropping all my stuff over there, racing back to the ballpark, kind of like seeing firsthand experience. It was pretty awesome. It was probably too much to even compute at the time. Tell me about the the emotion. He tells you you're going to the big leagues. That was probably the last thing you were thinking he was going to say over that phone call. Describe the, the emotion, the feeling that you had going through your whole body. Honestly, it's like my body just went numb, kind of like in that shock moment where I was like, I don't know if, he, if he's like joking with me. Because I know most people don't joke about that, but it's just kind of like, am I in that dream kind of experience? So it was kind of just how fast this year went. And tell me, what was the first phone call you made after you got the news? Who did you call? It was to my dad. So kind of like, I think I needed like, 10, 15 minutes to kind of like <laughs> get my thoughts straight. I bet. Where I was just kind of like, all right, did that just actually happen? When I actually had like a good like 10 minutes to talk, five minutes to talk, I gave my dad a call and I was kind of like, you're not going to believe this because I didn't think I was going to be here, but I'm going, I'm getting called up today to the big leagues. And wow. So he was super emotional about it and like really happy about it. And and then he was able to come up. I think that next day, my sister was able to come up. They were able to get flights and stuff like that to come up and see me. I think it was that Sunday that I threw. So, so any cool. kind of um, initiation or, or gags, you know, Bryce Harper, Trey Turner, Kyle Schwarber, these are, these are now your teammates. Anybody, you know, walking into the clubhouse with some of these guys, was that a little overwhelming? How did they welcome you? And, and how was that first meeting? Um, it was super cool, kind of like when I first walked in with like duffel bag, kind of like right before the game, it was kind of like, I know everyone here because like I, I've grown up watching them, like JT, like I said, Bryce Harper, Trey Turner, 
So it's kind of stuff like that where it was just like, wow, they're actually like teammates now and kind of like getting used to that and seeing like be able to play with them kind of like that was a pretty cool moment. So I think it took me like a couple of days. I act like a little kid for like, I think I said like two or three days. Sure. I kind of got used to it sure. where it's like, all right, now I'm kind of not saying like I'm at that popular level of where they are because they're obviously like MVP candidates every single year and kind of like the face of our teams, but one of the few faces of baseball where you think of Bryce Harper. Yeah, it's so, that, it had to be a little bit overwhelming. Oh, absolutely, a little bit, yeah. But then kind of getting used to everything, like used to like where things are. I think like I think the most thing besides the players wise, kind of getting used to their names because I'm going to see them every day. Was getting used to every staff member's name because I think I was I met probably more staff members I can count and I was like every time they said their name it just kind of went right over my head because I was like what because I was still in kind of that whirlwind experience sure like, am I actually here like so Orion you're on the mound or you're you're in the bullpen and um, you know whoever the pitching coach calls down to the bullpen says all right you're in tell me. What's going through your mind? The bullpen, the door opens up to the field, and you're walking up to the pitcher's mound, looking around, a lot of people in the stands. What was that walk to the mound like? Um, to be honest, I think I kind of blacked out a little bit, where it was like, I didn't feel, I would say I didn't, like, didn't feel my feet underneath me, but it was kind of like, just kind of the noises kind of went a little bit muter. They weren't like completely gone and lost, but it was like, it kind of got a little quieter in my head, just kind of like, all right, I have a job to do. Like, I'm thinking about this. And so I just need to do the best I can. Like, when I did walk out of the bullpen, kind of seeing, like, three decks fully of, like, fans. I think there was, like, anywhere from 30 to 35,000 people there that night. So it was kind of, like, for sure one of the bigger fan experiences I've had in my career, besides, like, the playoffs later that month or a couple weeks later. And it was just kind of like a cool moment to experience. And then like when you're looking down the mountain, there's like one of the best catchers in the league with JT there. So yeah, kind of like a lot more calming looking at him than uh, your old catcher, Jacob Zito. <laughs> I think that's what calmed me down a little bit more. I was like, okay, I have one of the best catchers in the league here. Like he's known for being one of the best in the last like six, seven years of him being playing up and stuff like that. So it's just trusting him that way. And I was like, I think all my confidence kind of went, through the roof after like saying like okay he's the one who's calling my pitches and be able to trust him that way so i think that was a pretty cool moment so you're pitching in the big leagues i mean and you're 22 years old and professional sports it's so i mean you got to be mentally tough i mean just let's face it you're still a kid so how do you think you developed this mental toughness to where you at such a young age can go into such a big moment and not completely implode? Uh, as a kid, it was kind of like I was a lot of my emotions, but kind of like talking to my dad a little bit because he was always like, you got to make sure like you're mentally strong. Like you can't like show your emotions as much like out there physically. So it was for sure kind of like a growing experience the last couple of years where it was like, from high school to college, where I think I took that bigger jump from college, and then especially like in pro ball, I think I cared more in high school just because of like you know how it is. I think we want to play like thirty some games if you even if that's if you make it all the high school uh, state championships. So it's kind of like it, each game mattered almost like if you're playing like four or five in the big leagues. And then same thing with college, where it was like we played fifty some through the regular season and playoffs, and that's if you make it. And then I think kind of seeing it that way through. The big leagues where it's like you play 162 games out of the year. Not saying you can't care every single day, but it's not like you need to worry about every little thing each day. So, Orion, let's talk about everybody dreams. Everybody wants to be a professional athlete. For you, it happened. What about Mm -hmm. when you were in college? Did you have a certain direction that you were studying for? Like... If baseball, because, you know, like you get a little older and, you know, you got some heat on you, you know that maybe some things could happen. But, you know, the older you get, the more reality sinks in and says, you know, like, oh, well, baseball is going to end one day. What am I going to do? Did you have a specific major? What were you looking to do after college if baseball wasn't your calling? Um. So I major, I'm still finishing up my degree right now to make sure I finish that up, but I'm majoring in finance, and I'm also getting a minor in management. So 
one day I could like always want to be like a financial advisor somewhere. So kind of like learning a little bit about money on the way. So I always thought like I'm going to college, obviously. I don't want to waste my time like getting like a degree that like I really didn't want to get or it's kind of like a degree that's like kind of passing time through school. So I was like, if I do want to be a baseball guy, I might as well learn a little bit of finance to kind of learn that aspect of it. And I also might as well get my management minor in it. So like if I do want to run my own firm, I'm able to, I have that degree background of running a management system that way. So that was always my secondary thing where it's like, Tell me a little bit about the financial, you know, without getting too personal. I mean, people can look up what, uh, you know, say the the uh, league minimum is in Major League Baseball, which I would uh, guess is somewhere be, between seven hundred and seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Tell me about that very first big league paycheck <laughs> when you're taking a look at that, because a lot of people don't realize that, the you know, minor leagues you're not making a zillion dollars. So what was that first paycheck like when you opened it up from the Phillies and you took a look at all those zeros? Were you like, whoa, I mean, was that was that a little bit of an eye opener? Uh, a little bit, yeah, because it was like, dang, this is like almost like two months of working. <laughs> I'm up here for like three or four days during that pay period and I get big league pay and I'm like, like I said, that's how much I got in two months when I get here for only pitching or been up here for three days, so it's kind of a fun experience. Though. Yeah, I, I bet. And uh, it's only going to get better. Was this your first job, like when you got signed, when you got drafted? Was that your very first job, or did you have a, a job in high school, like as a waiter, or what was it? Yeah, so this was kind of like, I guess, my second job. So, like, in high school, I worked at, like, some yogurt shop, kind of like, I think it was, like, towards, like, Sarasota area. Kind of like, it was almost like an ice cream parlor where I was kind of just kind of, like, hanging out a little bit, just doing little stuff that way. Just kind of past time, just because, like, baseball practice would be, like, right after school, so I had some time to kill and stuff like that. And I was like, I might as well go do something because I think my senior year, they made, like, a different rule for kids kind of, like, leave early and stuff like that. So it was, like all right, I need to go do something. So I was like, all right, I was going to get a job for some extra spending money. So I was just think I got like two, 300 bucks every couple of weeks. I think that was more than enough for a high school kid just to hang out with his friends and stuff like that through the couple of weeks. So it wasn't too bad at all. So that was your first job and your, your second job was uh, major league baseball. Pretty incredible. Yep. Pretty incredible. I really wish you nothing but all the success Know that all of your friends, they're all living vicariously through you, you know, because, you know, it's hard, you know. And, you know, my son in in particular is, you know, he's finished with baseball after this season. And he's trying to think of, well, if I don't have a great season, I'm going to have to put on a collared shirt and a khaki pair of pants and go to work. So know that all of your friends are watching and everybody's super proud of you and uh, I know that you're going to have a a real real long career so hang on tight keep your head where it is because I think you're on the right track and uh, that all has to do with growing up with a dad who was a military man I have a feeling that definitely kept you in check all the success congrats we're all proud of you I appreciate it thank you take care Richard Orion Kirkring It's a pretty cool name, isn't it? Actually, his dad and his grandfather are also Richard, and they all go by their middle names, which all are different. I mean, his big break, I don't know. I mean, this kid has gone through a lot of different levels of baseball, you know, played uh, college with the USF Bulls, did very well, College World Series, saw him pitch, uh, pitch against Texas, big crowd, um, I don't know what his big break was. Maybe college. I think maybe the time that I told the story how my son came home from school and he said, you're never going to guess who the ace of our pitching staff is. Um, and, and that basically that summer, Orion really developed like, pretty much overnight. Was that the big break? Who knows? So from the time he was 16 to 22, think about that, six years, he went through a lot of stages and quickly, high school, college, college world series, drafted, minor leagues, A ball, double A, triple A, big leagues. I mean, guys don't usually come up that fast. Orion was drafted in the fifth round 
of the 2022 Major League Draft. And now with Craig Kimbrell getting that deal with the Baltimore Orioles, Orion is now the closer of the Philadelphia Phillies. First job, he worked at a yogurt place in high school, making a few hundred bucks. Plenty of dough for a kid in high school. His second job, Major League Baseball. (laughs) I thought it was funny when I, I asked him about that first big league paycheck he got and all the zeros. And he was like, wow, pitched one day in the big leagues and was equivalent to like two months pay in the minor leagues. I was more impressed with his innocence, you know, and, you know, humble guy. He's just a kid, 22 years old. And here he is. He's handling it pretty well. And I have a feeling there's going to be a hell of a lot more zeros at the end of his paycheck in the very very near future. The closer of the Philadelphia Phillies, Orion Kirkering. What a story. Don't forget you can stream the Celebrity Jobber podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcast. Please subscribe. Would love a five-star rating. Leave a review. All past episodes are on CelebrityJobber.com. You can follow us on Instagram, Also, our YouTube channel, which is YouTube.com, the at sign Celebrity Jobber. Yeah, finance major. Degree will come in handy after he's finished his long career and made a lot of money. I mean, you don't know if these things ever are going to work out. Some of these celebrities are just like one lucky break away from being famous. And if not for that lucky break, who knows? No lucky breaks for Orion. He put the work in and you can see the results. Once again, thanks for listening to the Celebrity Jobber podcast. We'll see you next week. I'm Jeff Zito.